All right, now I'm a herd. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yep, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, I'm on the phone this time, so it might make things a little more difficult. My computer it just wouldn't unmute for some odd reason. Well, you look it looks actually clearer on your phone, your video does, than the computer anyway. So uh, welcome everybody here. Um, thanks for bearing with us while we have some technical difficulties. Tonight is our Let's Talk Bass Fishing uh, webinar with Pradco Outdoor Brands. And this is our third night. My name is Kendra Engel. I am with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. I am an educator at the River Valley Nature Center in Fort Smith. We have several centers around the state that offer free programs to the public. These educational programs are funded by license sales and also the one eight cent sales conservation tax. So tonight we have Dustin Elder from Pradco Outdoor Brands and Jeff Buckingham from the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. Just a few housekeeping, housekeeping things. We are recording this program tonight. Afterwards, it may be tomorrow, but we will email everyone that has signed up. We'll send you the link for tonight and also the link for the previous weeks. So this is a five week series and this is night three. This is a Zoom webinar, so we cannot see you or hear you as our attendees. And so if you're chilling on the couch, perfectly okay with us, but you can see and hear us. So the chat box is what we will be using for communication and questions. If you're new to Zoom, your chat box should be at the bottom of your screen. So I'll let Jeff introduce himself real quick and then Dustin, I'll let you take it away. Uh, yeah, my name is Jeff Buckingham. I'm a biologist in the fisheries division with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, uh, specifically the black bass program and the black bass being your large mouth, spot, uh, small mouth and spotted bass, um, different than your, your white bass or striped bass, uh, talking different fish there, but um, I'm located in Hot Springs on the shores of Lake Hamilton. Um, and yeah, what we do in the black bass program is uh, just a little bit that has to do with everything bass, uh, whether it's habitat work, uh, working with the fish themselves or working with the bass anglers. So we, we do a little bit of everything uh, when it pertains to black bass. Thank you, Jeff, and I'll take it away here. Uh, my name is Dustin Elder. I'm the pro staff manager at Pradco Outdoor Brands. And what Pradco is, we are a fishing lure company. We're based in Fort Smith, Arkansas. And we are the owner of several brands of lures such as uh, Booyah, Yum, Bandit, Norman, Smithwick, lots of really cool brands that, that a lot, lot of you probably use. And uh, what I want to do tonight is just, you know, do some talks like we've done before talking about spawn bass fishing. That's our main topic tonight, the actual spawn, which is pretty much what we're about to get into in Arkansas. We're about to be in the actual bass spawn. We're going to break it down as much as we possibly can. I'll, I'll lean on Jeff heavily to talk a lot about, you know, the actual behavior of bass, but we'll go over some really cool lures that you need to be throwing this time of year and just, just, just wrap about bass fishing. We'll just do a lot of talks about bass fishing, uh, but to just get into it, man, just to get into the intro that we want to do here is, is what is the bass spawn? And just as a, a typical fisherman, like I am here in Arkansas, the bass spawn to me is the most magical time of the year. This is bass are moving shallow. They're going, you know, they're trying to, you know, create a nest or trying to make a bed or whatever you might want to call it. They're mating up shallow, you know, to create more bass. It makes them really easy to pick off with lots of really cool lures. But that's really to the extent of what I know. I know that it gets to be the right time about this time of year. The water temps right and bass are moving shallow to spawn. But Jeff, could you just give me a definition on what is the bass spawn and why are they doing that right now? Yeah, you kind of nailed it on the head. You know, the, the water temp is getting to the right temp where they want to spawn. Um, anywhere from 55 to 65 degrees is when the bass are going to be trying to spawn. Um, I was just on Lake Washtaw and the water there I saw was about 53, 54. So that's going to really start triggering those male bass to be moving shallow and start creating those beds. Um, and yeah, so like you said, they're, they're, they're spawning to create the next generation of fish. And um, you know, depending on where you're at in the state, the spawn is going to be happening at a different time. So central Arkansas, I saw that water temp on Washita at 54. 
I wouldn't be surprised. Like they, they should be spawning right now in South Arkansas. And then it might be a couple more weeks later that in North Arkansas, you, you'll see the main part of the spawn going. But um, I know we talked about this a little bit last week, but one important characteristic is that they don't all spawn at the same time. Those bass are going to be spawning over a really a couple month period, um, anywhere from the end of March here to even early May. So um, they will be uh, spawning over a, a long period of time and there will be, be bass in different periods of the spawn, uh, the pre-spawn, the spawn itself, and then post-spawn all at the same time in a lot of lakes. So, um, and yeah, those bass are just gonna come up shallow uh, anywhere, depending on the water clarity, you know, usually 10 feet or less, your, your muddier lakes, they're gonna spawn real shallow. In a lake like Lake Washtaw or Bull Shoals, they're gonna be spawning potentially a little deeper, anywhere from three to 10 feet. And um, uh, the males tend to spend a little bit more time up shallow than the females do. They, they have all the parental care. They're gonna be the ones that are guarding the eggs, fertilizing the eggs and guarding the fry. Whereas the females, they're just gonna come up, lay their eggs in a nest, um, and then go back off and start feeding and recovering from the spawn. Uh, it is important to note, I think, that those females do put their eggs in a few nests. Uh, that, that kind of um, gives them an insurance policy that at least one of their nests will have some of their, um, their fry survive. So um, that's really all that the, the bass spawn is. There's a, there's a lot that goes into it. The bass, um, they're, I guess, habitat-wise, they're, they're looking to find some something hard to spawn on. So in these rocky lakes, it's really not hard to find something hard to spawn on. There's a lot of rock everywhere, but they're gonna be looking for, for gravel, something easy to make a bed in. Uh, in your muddier lakes, uh, something with more silt in them, they're gonna be looking for a stump to maybe uh, lay those eggs on, or even uh, sometimes it's all that's available might be a lily pad stem. Uh, that might be the hardest structure in that lake and they will spawn right on the base of that. So. Um, they're very resilient and they um, really find a way just to make it happen uh, in, in all our lakes. So um, I guess that's the spawn as a, from our a biologist standpoint. That's a, that's a really great definition that answered a lot of questions I have here. I was, you know, first thing was with the bass spawn was water temp. So we got an answer there. It's 55 to 65 degree water. So if you find yourself in that water, you need to move shallow and you need to move to locations such as you know hard cover up shallow like you're saying like stumps rock uh, on clear lakes lay downs i mean they're, they're going to spawn somewhere in that area something hard or on a shallow lake or a shallow river like the arkansas river they're going to get up against a stump or just pieces of wood you know just common things that you're going to find on the bank i mean if you get into a creek or you're just going down a certain bank you're just going to you're going to find this stuff it's everyday stuff that we look at and we say man i'd really like to you know i'd like to flip a jig into that well this is the time of year that you're able to catch fish in those scenarios. So go up shallow. If you've got water between 55 to 65 degrees, look for these shallow water targets, as we call them, like a stump, a, a rock pile, or anything that you can visibly see or you can notice just under the water. There's probably going to be, you know, a male guarding a bed. Or, you know, if you get really lucky, like we all hope, you're going you're gonna to flip in next to that stump and you're going to catch a seven or eight pound female that just laid her eggs or is just about to. If you get real lucky, you'll get to do that. And sometimes it might even be two or three times on a trip. And uh, another question I had for you was time period and moon phases. Now I have, I, I hang out a lot up here at my dad's car dealership that I'm at right now. And a bunch of old men will get around and say, man, it's getting close to the, it's getting close to the full moon. The bass are going to be moving up. Does that, does that play in a lot? Yeah, there is some truth to that. Um, there will be a push from some fish that are going to want to um, move up with the moon phase. Um, my recommendation for people is, is just don't wait for that moon phase, get out there as, as much as you can during that time period in the spring, because every day, uh, can be good. Uh, the moon just kind of does help things move along. Maybe some fish that were thinking about spawning and, you know, if it's close to the full moon, that'll push them to start making beds or females to get up on a bed. But, um, it's not the end all be all, but it definitely does help things along. For sure. Yeah, well, you, you know, you heard it here from Jeff. Right now is the time to take your vacation or quit your job. You just need to go out there and be there every day. I sure wish I could. If I 
if I could do that, man, I wouldn't leave my boat. I would just get me a bunch of beanie weenies and SpaghettiOs and just put me a tent up on it and just live on Lake Washita. That would be that that'd be my ultimate dream right there. Well, well, that, that gives everybody kind of a, a scientific or a, you know from a, a biology standpoint, what is the bass spawn? That's just you know they're moving up shallow to make more bass. And, and for fishermen, that's this this is the time that we need to be fishing. This is when we need to be trying to catch fish because it's it's easier this time of year. I mean. We got a lot of lakes like Washtaw, Bull Shoals, Beaver, super deep water, and it's really hard to target fish. But during this time, they're shallow to where anybody can find them. If you're pond fishing, this is this becomes you know super easy because they're just lined up along the bank on any type of hard target. Definitely recommend with ponds to you know hit them as soon as possible. The shallower water is going to warm up quicker, like the Arkansas River or just any any shallow water. So hit those up as soon as you can. It's going to warm up much quicker than Lake Washtar, Bull Shoals, or any of our deep clear water lakes. But that gives us a bi you know a biological standpoint on what the bass spawn is. Uh, next thing I want to get into is, is just some really good lures that you can throw this time of year to maximize your time on the water. I, I know a lot of people like me. You know, we got other things. I got you know kids, different things that we've got to do outside of fishing. So we need to maximize our time when we're on the water. Well, number one lure that I can tell you about to maximize your time in the spring in spawn fishing is a five inch yum dinger. This bait, it's just a common stick bait. We make it yum. It's sold in Walmart Academy, just about any department store in the world, I think, because it's just, it's a great fish catcher. It's just a cylindrical little, little worm. We make it in all sorts of colors. I like really bright ones for clear water this time of year or really bold ones like black and blue for dirty water. But what I do with this is I just take a hook and I just rig it right in the middle, just like this. I just take it, rig it just like that, where you can cast that thing out and work it wacky rig. I just saw a note there, my, did my sound go off? I'm still hearing you, Dustin. I can, I can still hear you also. Okay, I saw that. But open everybody can still hear me but like i was saying that's called a wacky rig with our five inch yum dinger this is an excellent bait just to cover water with fishing shallow against you know stumps other targets you see in the water you just take this on some, on a spinning rod wacky rig with a little hook cast it out next to whatever target you see on the bank and it's just going to slowly shimmy down and it's irresistible to bass it just looks like something dead or you know a minnow or something just kind of floating down and they're always going to take a hit on that. And it's, it's a great way to catch a, a 10 inch bass or a 20 inch bass. I mean, I've, I've seen people catch eight or nine pounders on, on this thing. And a, a good friend of mine's a guy over in a, on Lake Greeson caught a 12 pounder on it this past week. So it's a great bait to catch fish numbers and size. Another great bait is a, a Texas rig with like a creature bait or a craw. This is our yum spine craw. This is just a small crawdad looking plastic. And if you're fishing around heavy cover, you know, if you're fishing Arkansas River, if you're fishing around big laydowns and trees, this is a great option because, you know, you've got your hook point buried in the bait. You just take you a little like quarter, three eighths ounce weight and put on top of it. And you're able to pitch this bait around heavy cover and it's going to slide right through. It's going to come over the top and it's not going to get hung up. It's a really great option around heavy cover. I recommend it highly. And just like the Yum Dinger, just in a natural color, this is a, it's called California 420. It's green pumpkin and it's got some black and red flake in it. Just looks like a bluegill. That's what I would recommend for slow fishing, as I call it. If you're going to fish uh, on a bright sunny day, you ain't got a lot of wind. Those options are great because it's a lot more natural presentation. It seems to get the most bites in those conditions. But if you've got different conditions, if you've got uh, overcast skies, if you've got heavy wind, rain, anything like that, you can use a moving bait, something like this. This is a Booyah XCS square bill crankbait. I've talked about this in every one of our lectures so far. It's just a great way to, to hit shallow bass and be able to catch some fish around laydowns or anything like that. I like to use a shad pattern when it becomes the actual spawn. It seems to get the most bites. You just throw this out, you know, in a cove pocket, anywhere that you've got these laydowns or any visible cover you can see, cast near it where this bait can run and bump into it. With that square lip, it's going to kick out. And whenever it kicks out, that's typically when you're going to get a bite. Another great option. We talk about it every single week because this is a bait everyone needs to have, and that is just a typical spinner bait. 
This is a double wheel of spinner bait. It imitates shad or any type of bait fish. I got it in a chartreuse and white pattern here. It's bright, it's easy to see. It gets a lot of bites in clear or dirty water. This is an excellent option if you're faced with heavy wind, just to be able to cast up shallow near the bank, reel this thing around near uh, any type of cover or just you know over open water. This is something that will draw bass up for reaction strikes when they're not even hungry, they're not even looking for a meal. It just makes them mad. It's got a lot of flash, a lot of enticement. Hey, Dustin, we got a couple questions here, if you don't mind. I can't, I can't see them because I've got my phone propped up. That, that's fine. Um, let's see. Uh, we have a question. Is there a difference between a Yum Dinger and a Senko Green Pumpkin 297? Difference between a Yum Dinger and a Senko? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's definitely a difference. There's difference in every single stick bait out there. Our Yum Dinger, it typically, it's, it's enamored by people because it's a lot stouter plastic. It's stronger. It holds up after multiple fish catches. A Senko, it normally tears up quicker. But a Senko has a lot more salt in it. It's, it. it sinks really fast. It's just, you know, there's just differences to every bait. Ours has a little hook slot in it, so you can rig it Texas rig easier. It's just, it's, it's really your preference. I like the Yum Dinger because it's a little bit stronger. Uh, Ramiro also asked, do I need to use also a floating ball for the, for the lure? Uh, I'm talking about a, if you're talking about the yum dinger, you know, there's, there's really nothing else you need. You just need a small hook, you know, just without a bend in it, like a flipping hook or just a common gamakatsu bait holder hook is what I like to use. I can buy them at Walmart in like a hundred pack. Just a small little hook, rig it through the middle, and you're good to go. So no bobber needed there? No, no bobber needed there. Just hook, line, spinning reel, cast it out. All right. Ramiro says he's going tomorrow. That's what he said. Not <laughs> But, you know, um, when you say shallow, is there a specific depth that we should be fishing to have better success? Uh, like how many feet, whether you're in a boat or on shore? Just like Jeff mentioned earlier when he was talking about everything with the spawn, 10 foot or less is where you want to be this time of year. And that's pretty much anywhere. If you're on a clear lake, I, you know, I would look 10 foot or less. If I was on the river, I'd be five foot or less. I'd be right on the bank. Anywhere with dirty water, they're going to be very shallow. Okay. I think we're caught up on questions for now. Gotcha. Well, uh, next bait, you know, we talked about it last week, talked about it with a little bit of spawn and post spawn, and that is a topwater buzz bait. This is a Booyah Buzz buzz bait. This is just an excellent option for covering water. I, I throw this bait no matter what. If it's uh, windy, if it's not, this bait, you know, typically you can buzz it over the top of fish that are spawning. They'll come up, you'll get a reaction strike, a really cool bite on the water. And it normally draws up some pretty big bites. This is a great bait to always have tied on this time of year. I like it with a trailer on it, like a, you know, just a small swim bait, like our Yum Pulse that we have at Yum, or a, a Yum Tiptoe, the toad trailer on the back of it. That way it gives it a little more weight. Another lure is the Booyah Melee Bladed Jig. This little bladed jig, we talked about it last week. This is a great option whenever you've got high, you know, High sunny skies times, it's great when you've got wind. It's great in almost any condition. If you're around grass or any type of heavy cover, that's whenever I'll pick this bait up just to be able to buzz around it, you know, run it into grass, pop it out, that type of thing. It's just a really good option to run into cover. It gives a, a slightly different look than a spinner bait because it's got a little bit of, it's just got this little blade that kicks on the front of it and gives it just a wobbling sensation. It's a I like to say it's just easier to use for beginners than a swim jig. It's called a bladed swim jig. And a swim jig, what you do with it, you know, you throw it out and you're trying to hop it with your, you know, with the rod tip, make it move. A bladed swim jig, you just reel it and it moves. It's just a really great option to catch fish this time of year. Then my last two that I want to talk about, these are two that people, you know, you, you probably wouldn't think about it. You know, you see these type of things in the store and you're like, I don't know if that'll work or not, but I highly recommend them. One, this is my favorite thing other than the Yum Dinger this time of year. This is a small swim bait. This is a, our Yum Scottsboro swim bait. This is a three and a half inch model. I take this and put it on a small jig head, like an eighth or three sixteenth ounce, put it on a spinning rod, and I just go into coves and pockets and clear water lakes, like Washita, Bull Shoals, Greason, any of those. And I just cast this bait around in coves and pockets. I just reel it slow, fishing it as slow as I possibly can, getting it near cover, bumping it into stuff. It's a very natural option to get some bites whenever there's no wind, there's no, you know, 
conditions, you know, that we like to be out there, but the fish don't typically bite the best, you know, high sunny skies, that type of thing. I like to pick up a swim bait and just reel it around and just anywhere that I possibly can. There's really no bad area to throw a single swim bait in. This is just a natural minnow looking option that all bass will eat. You'll catch bass, walleye, crappie, anything on that. Last one that I want to talk about, and this is a bait that is very near and dear to my heart. This is Smithwick Devil's Horse. This is a topwater prop bait. It's a wooden topwater prop bait. And, you know, you, you see this and you think, I don't know, why, why would I throw just a topwater lure like that? Well, a prop bait during the spawn is just so excellent. It's, it allows you to work over, you know, spawning beds and bass that are up shallow near cover very slowly. It just, you know, these little props on the head and tail, they just, they just, you know, irritate the water just a little bit. And you're able to just sit right on top of fish that are spawning and just kind of pop that bait, pop it, pop it, move over them and just irritate them. It just makes them mad and they'll come up and get this bait. You're able to draw bites in, you know, slick, calm water, or if you got wind or any other condition, you can just work it slower or faster, depending on that. This is a bait I highly recommend if you're out there fishing a pond, river, creek, anything, and you know bass are spawning. Take this bait, throw it next to a stump, a log, or anything in shallow water, and slowly work over it, and you're going to get some bites. I can guarantee you that. Um, Jesse has a question. What type of um, line and what size line do you recommend for these types of baits and lures? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's, that's I can go right back through and just do it pretty quickly. Uh, with small swim bait, like this Yum Scottsboro swim bait, I like to throw eight to 12 pound test fluorocarbon because it sinks. I like to throw this on a spinning rod just because it's got a live jig head on it. The devil's horse, I throw it on like a medium heavy casting rod with braided line. I like to throw it on 30 to 50 pound braided line just so whenever I get a bite, I can set the hook and I can get them in the boat. Uh, the Booyah Melee swim jig or a bladed swim jig. This one right here, 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon line. You want a heavy action rod typically. This is because you're fishing around heavy cover. You're, you know, you get a bite, they're going to dive down. You want to be able to get them out and as quickly as possible. Same thing with the spinner bait, 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon line for it. The Texas rig, I like to use 17 or 20, you know, even heavier fluorocarbon line with this because, I mean, I like to use a, a pretty stout hook and EWG hook on this thing. And when I get a bite, you know, I want to set the hook and I want to drive that hook into them so I can pull them out of wherever they're at. And then with our yum dinger, this I like six or eight pound test fluorocarbon line on a uh, medium or medium light action spinning rod. I like light line on this because it's moving so slowly and just drifting down to these fish. I don't want them to be able to notice the line, anything of that nature. I want it to be a very finesse presentation. All right. Um, what type of EWG hook would you use with the Yum Dinger? What size? Uh, with five inch Yum Dinger, I use a three or a four aught. I, I typically like just a three aught, which is what I've got here. It's a smaller hook. I, I like to use smaller ones just because they seem to be able to get the bait better, especially, you know, a lot of times we're not catching seven or eight pounders. We're just catching, you know, a two or a three pounder. I typically get that one a lot better. Okay. As of right now, I'm up to date on questions. Uh, Jeff, is there anything you'd like to add in there? I don't think so. Um, Dustin really covered a lot of my favorite baits for the spawn right in that category. So um, you don't really have anything to add on that. Um, what he said is usually what I have tied on this time of year. I'm glad to hear that. But uh, Another thing I'd like to just go over with these baits is just uh, typical places to cast them, to throw them. You know, we talked about it a little bit, but, you know, during the spawn, you're, you're wanting to get into coves is typically like what I'm looking for. I want to get into a, you know, a creek arm somewhere and I want to find coves. I want to find cover within them, whether that be grass, uh, lay downs, trees, you know, anything that's on your lake that is shallow cover. It's, it's easy to find, but that's what you're wanting to target this time of year. What was the question we just had there? I just saw one of them pop up. Um, Eddie asked, do you fish a lake differently than a river? During the spawn, uh, no, you can typically use a lot of the same things. 
on a river if you've got dirtier water you can typically use a i like to call it faster presentations or more power fishing techniques such as like the you know the booyah melee bladed jig or a spinner bait you can typically do that or you need to use something like you know texas rig but with more action to it because you're wanting to draw a bass's attention in that dirty water you want to use something that's got some kicking legs or like this spine crawl here you, you want something that's going to get their attention so you do and you don't okay um ramiro asks, what about a fishing pole um is there something specific that he needs to be looking for when using some of the baits that you listed oh well anything that's finesse like the like the yum dinger if we're throwing the small swim bait just a typical spinning rod like a seven foot medium action is just the you know that's the run of the mill size you can find them at any store that's what I'd like to use for that. And then for all the other techniques, I recommend just, you, you can throw every single one of them on just like a seven foot to seven three medium heavy casting rod. You can find that rod as well at just any store, but just keep it as simple as you possibly can. You know, just look on the back side of the rod and have on the blank. It'll tell you the weight ratings. It'll tell you, sometimes it'll tell you the type of technique that's good to use. Just, you know, look it over and, you know, feel it with your hand, put it against the ground and notice the tip and the, find one that you suit best. And Nikki's question, what are your thoughts on fishing tournaments during the spawn? Um, does this eliminate potential bass population? Like if the bass wouldn't return back to the nest once it's been caught? That's kind of yeah, a- that, that'd, be, that'd be a great question for you. I know I've seen you run the tank at many, many tournaments at all times. Yeah. I could definitely speak to that. Um, it's a question that a lot of bass anglers have had, um, whether or not uh, bed fishing is, it hurts the population or not. And there's been a lot of research done on it. And uh, for the most part, on these large lakes that have uh, bass tournaments, um, there really isn't a population level effect that bass tournaments are having. So uh, you may remove a couple of bass from a certain bed and take them to the weigh-in. But that's one bed of probably 20 to 30, potentially more in one cove that may have been taken out. Um, so basically uh, the short answer is no, we, we don't ever really see um, detrimental effects from tournament angling on spawning bass. Um, there's just enough natural reproduction that occurs in our lakes here in Arkansas that they make up for it. The other ones that do pull off a spawn make up for it and then some. So um, no, we don't, we don't see anything that says that it's detrimental. Excellent. Yeah, that's a, that's a question I've had myself and just kind of always wondered throughout the years. Yeah, like I said, it's a question that a lot of bass anglers have always kind of wondered and uh, there has been a lot of research and it, it all kind of comes out saying that at a population level, there's not a, a huge effect there. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you. Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Chuck has a question. Spinning or bait casting, pros and cons for each. What's your preference and why? Oh, I, I like them both, honestly. I would say I use a spinning rod for anything that's lightweight or that I need to get as maximum casting distance for a light bait as I possibly can. Like this yum dinger, if I'm throwing it, it's always going to be on a spinning rod. A casting rod, the advantages to it is that, you know, you can use some heavier lures such as the spinner bait, the bladed jig, the buzz bait, things that weigh a little more. You can cast farther and you can set the hook a lot harder. You can typically, you know, fight bigger fish. I mean, it's sometimes it's pretty hard to get a six or seven pound bass on a spinning rod and try to get them in the boat pretty easily it's a lot easier to use like a you know a large casting rod you got a lot more backbone there and a lot stronger rod to be able to fight them so i mean they both have their categories i you know i live at lake washington i live two minutes from the nearest ramp and i mean i mostly use a spinning rod there because i'm fishing really clear water and i'm using little bitty baits like the yum dinger the a drop shot with a small finesse worm or something like that but you know people that are fishing lake dardanelle or the arkansas river in little rock or fort smith you're probably just going to have casting rods because you're only throwing bigger baits or, you know, things with a lot of action to them, like a spinner bait or a bladed jig. So you probably just have casting rods there. It really just depends on where you're at. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, we're caught up on questions. If anybody else has a question, feel free to um, ask it in the chat box. While we're waiting for that, just want to remind everybody that um, this series is a five night series and this is night three. We will be back next Thursday on March 31st. And Dustin, do you know what we're going to talk about then? I believe it's finesse lures for, for bass fishing. So we'll be talking a lot of things like the yum dinger and just a lot of other small plastic lures, small crankbaits, things that are, uh, that are small, easy to cast, you know, things that are great for people just getting into bass fishing. And Nikki's question, actually, I think from the notes that I saw files into next week, also Nikki's asking about kayak fishing tips. Are we going to talk about any kayak fishing next week? Maybe. We will. No, we can definitely talk about that then, and we can talk about it now because, uh, you know, we'll talk about the lures more or less next week okay. and some great things to throw when you're on a kayak. But just kayak bass fishing for the spawn, i just like to say it's an excellent way to fish this time of year because you're able to get silently up against a lot of fish that, you know, if you're in a boat, you're going to spook them off. You can, you know, sidle up next to fish, and it's, it's great because you can get into a cove. You can fish it out really thoroughly recommend using a lot of things like the, the yum dinger or anything that's finesse something that has a small entry into the water it doesn't have a lot of splash to it i recommend that for fishing a kayak right now great thank you um before we go do you have any recommendations that are greer's ferry specific uh locations etc they say they have no electronics definitely definitely have some greer's ferry lures uh Right now, I, I've talked to a couple of my buddies this past week, and they're going to fish a benefit tournament up there. And I recommend using like this Booyah Melee bladed jig just in a clear, like a shad pattern. We have it in a white silver. I recommend something like that with a small uh, small swim bait trailer like this Yum Scottsboro. Something like that where you can move down the bank really quick. And then also, I recommend already getting some Yum Dingers wacky rig and just going up shallow and, and pockets and coves and just throwing that yum dinger up against any type of cover you know pick you out a creek arm find you some coves and pockets in there throw this yum dinger throw it up against any type of cover wacky rig and you're probably going to get some bites this time of year you can also if it's you know if it's windy pick you up a bladed jig a spinner bait throw that down these same areas you've got wind blowing in there uh, those are the two things i would recommend right now for Greer's ferry awesome awesome well, I think we're all caught up here. I think so. Well, one, one thing, you know, just, just real quick, we, we did the past few weeks was just give some notable information on lakes nearby or just, you know, notable lakes where a lot of people are fishing. And, you know, just give some small reports. Uh, Lake Washtaw right now, it is beginning to fish really great. If you're in, in you know, a quick vicinity to get over here, I recommend it. Run up uh, any creek arms as far as you can get to find the dirtiest water or the warmest water. Throw something like this Booyah Melee bladed jig or, or this Booyah spinnerbait up shallow next to cover. Be able to get a lot of bites this time of year. Lake Hamilton, same deal. Get into creeks, pockets that have docks. There's docks everywhere cast something like this spinnerbait up against dock arms. Really great way to get bit this time of year. Just try to look for anywhere that has plenty of wind blowing in it. Uh, Lake Greeson, I had a good report there. People are catching fish on a yum dinger, a wacky rig already shallow in pockets. Some people are catching them on a jerk bait out deep on points in a, an umbrella rig like the Flash Mob Junior. Uh, Beaver Lake Stripers doing very well. Recommend throwing a uh, an umbrella rig like the uh, Young Flash Mob Junior rig with small swim baits. Look in the river channels, points, anywhere of that nature. Same goes for Bull Shoals. The bass fishing is getting very good up there. Recommend, you know, still stay a little bit deeper there. You know, the water hadn't warmed up quite as much. Throw something like a, a, a small jig, like a three-eighths or half-ounce naturally colored jig, like a green pumpkin. Work that deep in creeks, looking for the warmest water you possibly can. Red crankbaits, red... Uh, uh, like a Booyah one knocker, rattle bait, something of that nature. Uh, Arkansas River, water's warming up very quickly. I recommend using, you know, small Texas rig like we've got here, this young spine crawl, pitching up against shallow cover, looking for bass that are spawning, you know, hard cover like stumps, like we talked about earlier. I recommend that. If you got any wind, pick up a spinnerbait, a, 
you know, a bright colored spinner bait like a chartreuse and white and throw it in the same areas. All right, we have several questions. Okay. The first question, which I think I answered, was from John. Are these courses going to be available to rewatch? Yes, they most definitely are. We will be emailing out um, tonight's recording to all of those that had signed up. And in that email will be included the recordings from the previous two weeks. But I uh, put the email in there. If you want to make sure that you get a copy of this recording, you could email danielle.simmons at agfc.ar.gov, and we will make sure you get those recordings. Um, other questions, uh, a, when is a bladed jig better than a regular jig? A bladed jig is better than a regular jig whenever you are faced with wind, overcast skies, and you're needing a moving bait. It's If you're gonna throw a spinner bait, you could also throw a bladed jig. I just recommend the bladed jig around a little bit more heavy cover. Um, will you fish suspending jerk baits now, and when will you quit throwing them? Uh, fish a suspending jerk bait if you've got uh, up to 55 degree water. So yes, it's good to always have one nearby. And I mean, I'll quit once it gets to 55 degrees. Once I can fish shallow and just focus on these bass spawning, I'll, I'll put that jerk bait away. But any other time when it's below that, it's a great time for spinning jerk bait. Um. Are red colored baits suggested to be best pre-spawn and if so, why? They sure are and well red, you know, it mimics a bright red crawfish. That's why so many lures have a red crawdad pattern. And also red is just proven it just has, it triggers something in bass. It just triggers something to make them react. It's just a bright color. It looks like blood. It looks like something that just causes some type of reaction in their mind. Um, what are the regulation, re regulations for fishing an umbrella rig? They just moved to Arkansas. This is Brian. Brian just moved to Arkansas recently, and he's heard various things about what is legal and what is not in regard to the umbrella rig and the number of hooks. Oh, I do not believe that we have a regulation currently on hooks or wires. Uh, I like our umbrella Flash Mob Junior. It has five wires, and you put five jig heads on it and five swim baits. That's, that's just an easy way to do it. It's lightweight and you can cast it really well. But to my knowledge, I don't believe we have any anything to do with hooks or wires or anything in the state of Arkansas. I mean, don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I'd read before. No, you're right on that. Um, we don't have a lure or hook restriction here in Arkansas, so you can use as many as you need on there. Awesome. Yep. And I want to say welcome to Arkansas, Brian. Um, Laura's question. How do you fish the yum dinger exactly? So there went a little more detail on the yum dinger. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll just display it to you exactly the way I like to fish it. Take your hook. This is an EWG. I like to use just a regular straight hook that doesn't have a bend to it. But you'll just take it, rig it right in the middle, just like that, to where it's, this is what we call wacky rig. And you just take this, cast it out into, around any shallow cover that you can find on the bank. Let that bait just just throw it out there and just let it sit. Give it about five seconds and let it drop towards the bottom. Pick up the slack, kind of give it a couple of pops. It'll just kind of move through the water like that. And then just let it fall again back to the boat. Typically, you're going to get a bite the first time you throw it in there and it starts dropping. Awesome. Um, Laura said awesome. Um, so I don't have any more questions here. We can give just a few more minutes. If there's anything either of you would like to add, feel free while I'm waiting to see if we've got any questions coming in. Uh, not at the moment. I'm just glad we're able to have this venue to talk about all this stuff. Yeah, I'll say get out there and go fishing. It's uh, spring only comes around once a year. So this is the time to be out there and um, take advantage of the nice weather and catching some bass. All right. Well, I hope everyone um, that is on spring break has had a really great spring break. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Jeff and Dustin, for joining us again. And um, feel free to use the same link that you followed 